Hey, I'm Anastasia and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk to you all about AWS Bracket, a new quantum computing platform that gives you access to multiple quantum devices from different companies. I'll demo the platform, talk a little bit about all the different quantum hardware and what each device can do, and together we're going to code a simple quantum circuit, a bell pair. This is one of the fundamental building blocks of quantum computing, and that's without having to have millions of dollars to buy your own quantum computer. You can do all this in your browser with just your laptop. I'll link any resources I talk about in the description below. Let's get started. First, go to aws.amazon.com slash bracket to get into the bracket platform. From here, if you already have an AWS account, you can sign in or you can create an account. When you log in, you'll get to this main page here. There are three major sections. Devices, which is a list of the quantum chips and simulators on which you can run quantum circuits. Notebooks is a list of instances. The notebook instances spin up cloud resources that come pre-installed with the Bracket SDK, so there's nothing you need to download or install to use the Bracket platform and connect to the devices. And then there are tasks, which are the runs and results of the code on the available quantum devices. First, let's navigate to the devices section and talk about what devices are available to run the quantum code on. There are four different devices to run your code on. First, there's a D-Wave annealer with 2000 qubits. Then we have the IonQ and Rigetti devices, both universal gate quantum computers. The IonQ devices trapped ions, while the Rigetti device are based on Josephson junctions. There's also the simulator that can be used to simulate up to 34 qubits. Let's dive into each of these devices a little bit more. The D-Wave machine is a quantum annealer. This is great for optimizing solutions to problems by quickly searching over a space and finding a minimum or a solution. It has 2048 qubits. IonQ is a universal gate quantum computer with 11 qubits. These qubits are made out of ytterbium, atomic number 70, and trapped with lasers in a chain. Now, even though there are only 11 qubits, the topology is really interesting because the device is fully connected. That means that each qubit has a direct connection to every other qubit. This is important for really efficient quantum algorithms. There's also information about the calibration. Fidelity is a measurement of how close two quantum states are. So this tells us for one qubit, when you apply a gate and read it out, you have about a 99.7% chance of reading out the same state as you expect. Since there's noise in quantum systems, it won't be 100%. Now, moving on to the Rigetti Aspen 8. This device is a universal gate-based quantum computer with superconducting qubits. It has 30 qubits. Now, when we look at the topology, we see that this is really very different from the IonQ device. Not all the qubits are connected to each other. This really matters when you're programming real quantum algorithms. If you want to do a CNOT gate on qubits 2 and 4, they're not directly connected, so you need to do a swap gate to swap the state of the two qubits. Because quantum circuits are still error-prone, you want to minimize the amount of swap gates that you have to do. As we scroll down, we see a lot of calibration numbers. I'll provide some more information about what all this means, but there's information about coherence times and fidelity for every qubit, as well as for pairs of qubits all the way down here. But let's talk about T1 and T2. These numbers tell us one measurement of how long it takes for a qubit to lose coherence. Coherence is the amount of time quantum information can be stored. T1 is called spin lattice relaxation time, or just relaxation time. This measures how long it takes for a qubit to drift back to the ground state. T2 is a dephasing time, also called spin-spin relaxation, or transverse relaxation. Dephasing happens when a qubit is in a certain state, but it starts rotating around the axis. We want these numbers to be as high as possible because that means we have longer coherence times. Now, there's also a simulator available that can simulate up to 34 qubits. The simulator is just a classical computer system pretending to be a quantum computer, but you can use this backend to test your circuits. Now, how much does it cost to actually run quantum circuits on these machines? Let's check out this Amazon bracket pricing page. This page lists the cost of running a quantum circuit on these devices. There's a per task or circuit cost, and then the number of shots, so the number of times you want to run that circuit. Now let's move on to actually building our quantum circuit. Let's create a notebook instance and navigate to the notebook instances dashboard. Now I want to talk to you all about something really important here before we do this. Do not forget to shut off your notebook instance after you're done. I am not responsible for AWS billing charges. When we're here, we can go ahead and click the orange create notebook instance button in the upper right hand corner. Here you can provide your notebook instance name, the instance type, we can go with the smallest and just the medium. For the IAM role, we can go ahead and use an existing role and use the standard bracket service sage manager notebook role. 
We don't need root access, so we can disable that, and you don't really need a custom encryption key. Then hit the Create Notebook Instance Orange button at the bottom. Now, this is gonna take a little bit of time to create, so go ahead and take a break and get something to drink, and then come back here and we'll continue on with the tutorial. Now, once the notebook is ready and it says In Service, we can go into it by clicking on the name. You'll see this bracket example folder, which we will explore a little bit later. Let's create a new notebook by clicking on the upper right hand corner and making a new notebook using the conda bracket. For this code, we're going to create a bell pair, two qubits that are maximally entangled with each other. This is one of the fundamental building blocks of quantum computing. First, we want to do a bunch of imports and we want to import Bado3. Bado3 is an SDK that makes it easy to connect to AWS services. Then, to make a simple circuit, we want to import circuit from bracket.circuits. And we want to import AWS device from bracket.aws to actually be able to connect to real quantum chips. And of course, we want to import our favorite library, matplotlib. To get your AWS account ID, you can use this Bado3 library. Then we want to set up a device. Use the AWS device function and import the ARN ID of the device that you want to use. When you're just starting to create the circuit, use the simulator first. For experiments of less than 20 or so qubits, you can even use the local simulator. If you want to use a cloud simulator, you can connect to it and put its ARN in here. But for the local simulator, all you have to do is call the local simulator. Next, we want to set up the S3 folder, and that's where the results will go. Also, if you're having trouble with your S3 folder, you can always create one manually and hard code it in here. Now that we have all the details set up, we want to create a bell pair. So now that we have all the details set up, let's create a bell pair. We call circuit to create a quantum circuit. Then we apply a Hadamard gate on the zeroth qubit. The Hadamard gate puts the qubit in an equal superposition of the zero state and the one state. Also, let's add a CNOT gate, which stands for controlled NOT gate. The first number is which qubit is the control qubit, and the second number is which qubit is the target qubit. This gate works by bit flipping the second qubit, this qubit one, if and only if the first qubit is in the one state. This creates an entanglement between the two qubits. Then we carefully run the code by using the run method on the device. And we can also change the amount of shots or attempts of the circuit you want to do for the task. The shots are the number of times to run the circuit or annealing problem. The default is 1000 for quantum processing units. You can add an optional parameter to the run method and change the amount of shots. So that's it. We run the cell and we wait for the results. If the device is live, you can also add a print statement to get the measurement counts, so you can immediately get the results back when the code is run. We'll do that first since we're going to run it on the local simulator. So what should we expect by running this code? If the first qubit is in the zero state, the CNOT gate does nothing to the second qubit, which remains in the zero state. However, if the qubit is in the one state, it bit flips the second qubit from the zero state to a one state. The first qubit is in an equal superposition, meaning it has a 50% chance of collapsing into the zero state and a 50% chance of collapsing into the one, plus or minus some noise. We see this result on the simulator. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually run this on the IonQ device instead of on the simulator. And if you're done using your notebook and you're done with the tasks, remember to shut down your notebook. Besides running the tasks, the notebooks do cost money. Now I left mine running for like three and a half days and it cost eight cents, but still, I'm not responsible for your AWS charges. Please stop your instances if you're done with them. Now let's go over to the tasks section. Now tasks run in certain regions, so if you don't see your task, you may need to click up here in the upper right hand corner and change the region. As you see, the circuit is queued here on the IonQ device. Now when the task is done, you'll see that it's completed. Let's click on the task and you'll see all the details of the run. The device, the status, created at a time, ended time, number of shots, all that information. And we can get the results by clicking the S3 bucket link and downloading the JSON file with the results. This results file includes the results and some additional metadata. Here in the instructions, we can confirm that the circuit is the one that we coded. A Hadamard gate on qubit 0 with a CNOT with a control in qubit 0 and the target on qubit 1. We ran 1000 shots of this experiment. 
Now above we can see the results. We expect the results to be 50% in the 00, 0 state and 50% in the 11 one state. The results are 46.3% in the 00, 0 state and 48.6% in the 11 one state. So why do we see some of the measurements in the 10 and the 0, 01 state? That shouldn't happen. That's because real quantum computers are not perfect and they have errors. So you'll see this noise in the data that we measured, just like we talked about. You can do a few things here. You can pick qubits that have lower error rates, going back to the calibration charts on the devices, or you can do quantum error correction techniques. Now, for a simple circuit like this, it's not necessary, but quantum error correction is a huge aspect of making quantum computers be more accurate. Now that we've built a simple circuit and have run it on a quantum computer, what's next? Start exploring the notebooks that are provided in the instances that you spun up. There are a range of notebooks to choose from, from simple circuits and how to access the device properties to complicated circuits like Grover's algorithm. Also, there's a folder with examples for running code on the D-Wave machine. Remember, because D-Wave is a quantum annealer, you can't use the same code in the same circuit that you wrote for the IonQ device on the D-Wave machine. There's additional tutorials on the D-Wave website that let you code in browser and see a lot of documentation and examples of real use cases of the D-Wave machine, like grouping constellations, running a binary classifier, or scheduling nurses. Now, as we go back to the bracket platform, don't forget to stop your instances when you're done with them. And remember to smash the like button if you like this video. Soon, I'm gonna talk about CERC and TensorFlow Quantum, so subscribe if you wanna know when those videos are up.